All right, welcome to what, week five, propellers? Guess what that means? That means we're done with fuel systems. And if you didn't know, know it by now, you don't know it by now. All right, so to start off propellers, I want to read this quote from Orville Wright. And I think this sets the tone quite well for propellers. And I'll read this. Or This is Orville speaking. I'm speaking, but this is what Orville wrote. I've got to be so clear with you guys. It was apparent that a propeller was simply an aero, aeroplane traveling in a spiral course. As we could calculate the effect of an aeroplane, and they spell it A-E-R-O-plane, which is weird. As we could calculate the effect of an aeroplane traveling in a straight course, why should we not be able to calculate the effect of one traveling in a spiral course? At first glance, this does not appear difficult, but on further consideration, it is hard to even find a point from which to make a start. The thrust depends upon the speed and the angle at which the blade strikes the air. The angle at which the blade strikes the air depends upon the speed at which the propeller is turning, the speed the machine is traveling forward, and the speed at which the air is slipping backwards. When any one of these things changes, it, re it changes all the rest as they are all interdependent upon one another. Oval right. So on first glance, propeller. They said, it's just an airplane going in a circle. How hard could it be? <laughs> and then they thought about it for a minute and thought, <clears throat> It doesn't get much harder. So not to scare you, but just to, just to say that when one thing changes, everything changes. So I'm going to show you and we're going to kind of walk through that together. One of the things about propellers that is very different than all of the things we've been, or most of the things we've talked about so far, is there's not a lot that we can or should do with propellers. It's kind of like opening up uh, a fuel injection system. You probably ought not to do it unless you're working for a certified repair station. But the difference is the FAA doesn't come right out and say, hey, you can't open up a fuel injection system. I think they just kind of hope that you're smart enough not to be doing it because of all the little, you know, diaphragms and stuff. But when it comes to propellers, they actually come right out and say, for the most part, don't mess with this. Uh, because the amount of centrifugal force on a propeller is measured in tons. They want to fly apart. So they want to kill you, they want to fly apart, and they're under tremendous amounts of stress. Any sort of imbalance can bring the aircraft down. Uh, have you ever had an imbalance in here? No, no, no. So I had uh, one of my first flight instructors, you know, lesson number two probably, you know, and he said, uh, he was talking about one time he had a the uh, the cone on the front the uh, the spinner propeller spinner came loose and a piece of it had broken off and he said it shook the airplane so violently that only thing he could think to do is to shut off the engine and to restart it he, he was convinced that it was shaking so bad that it was going to rip it out of the front of the aircraft and of course if the engine does happen to fall off of the front of the aircraft, you realize it's not going to be a glider. It's going to back up because of the weight and balance. It needs the engine on the front to maintain this, this levelness to be able to glide. So when the engine shakes and falls off the front, then the nose will come up and you'll back up. And that's not a good place to be. And I, in fact, I've, <clears throat> I've actually worked on planes where the, the engine has, has a cable going around it somewhere to the to the airframe, as so if it's going to fall off, the cable will kind of keep it. <clears throat> I think it would dangle down, but I don't know. <clears throat> I just wouldn't fly in that airplane. All right, so there's your reading, and of course, as with every week, uh, Canvas has your, your Q and A's. I don't quite remember offhand <clears throat> how many there were this week. Oh boy. All right. Three different places. All right. So uh, this week we're going to talk about propellers in general and, and mostly fixed pitch. And then in the next weeks, we're going to go on to adjustable and then constant speed propellers. So we'll start slow and, and, and pick up to a run here. So first thing we're talking about is the nomenclature, things on the propeller. What are we going to call things? And I could write all this down, which I I guess I will at some point, but 
normally I would have this picture on this side and I would write on this board and it would make sense, but now we can't do both at the same time, so you just got to write that down. So uh, write down these things. Uh, one, we have the blade. Where's the blade? I don't even see a blade, so I have one. So we have the blade. And this, this is the, oh, let me switch over to here. Laser pointer. So these are the blades. This has two blades. Blade one and blade two. And sometimes these blades, and I just made that up, blade one and two, but in all honesty, a lot of times they're actually labeled. There will be a one right here and a two right here because you need to keep track. And if there was some damage and you said, I, I had to blend out some damage to, to blade number one, well, you can't say the right-hand blade, can you? The left-hand blade, because the thing spins, right? So the right and the left-hand change us for you guys here. And uh, so, so that'll be labeled. We have a one and a two here. So you can tell which ones. So you have your blades, so blade. Uh, the neck, neck, of course, is this, this smaller area right around here. Um, note that in the metal propeller, the neck can actually get a little bit smaller, is where it's, it's thicker on a wood propeller. So the blade, we have the neck. I figure if I write it down, you'll write it down. All right, except it's A, B, C, not one, two, three. So A, B, C, hub. Now on a fixed pitch propeller, the hub is all in one piece most of the time especially with the wood, so the hub is here. Uh, on constant speed propellers, ground adjustable propellers, the hub is often a separate part. You can change out the blades from the hub. We have the hub bore right in here. Uh, hub bore is designed to fit over the pilot of the crankshaft. So it has a little flange sticking out, and a pilot valve supposed to go over that. Uh, hub bore, it's a very specific size. Uh, we have the bolt holes, which are going around. Bolt holes. Bolt holes are a point of inspection, especially on wood props. I'm going to talk a lot about maintaining wood props. They're, they're, they're kind of maintenance pigs in, in a way. But only if you want it to stay nice and keep it for a long time. If you want to abuse it and don't take care of it, uh, they really you can neglect them quite well. And then just throw them away and buy a new one, uh, which you don't want to do. Uh, it's time for me to do something? It's time for class, huh? <laughs> I'll just get this story out of the way because like three times where I thought, should I tell him this story? So I'll just tell it. Uh, I will not mention the names to protect the guilty. Probably somebody you don't know anyway. But they had put, they built an engine and changed a crankshaft out. And crankshafts have very specific flanges. And we never really talked about that before. Like the difference between uh, like an O235 L2C um, one version that went in one engine uh, may have a type one type of crankshaft, but you still may have an L2C. Uh, I shouldn't say an L2. It'd be different. You still can have an O235. May have a slightly different crankshaft out on front. The flange is a little bit different. The bolt holes will be spaced different apart. So one manufacturer wants the L2C version. Another one wants this other version. And what happened is uh, they, they said, oh, O235 crankshaft must be an O235 crankshaft, must be an O235 crankshaft. So they got an O235 crankshaft, put it into this engine, built it up, got all done, put it in the aircraft, were ready to put the, aircraft, put the propeller on and go run it when they realized that the propeller would no longer fit on the front of this engine because they had changed out and put the wrong crankshaft in. But now that you guys are qualified engine mechanics, that's a real easy, simple fix. What do you got to do? Just take it apart and get a, and get a new crankshaft. That is correct. But this particular person, being the super genius that he is, thought, well, that's just ridiculous. Why go through all that effort when I could just drill new holes in my <laughs> propeller? To add a little bit of insult to this, it's a particular propeller that happens to have a 100-hour AD due on it quite often. 
because the air is cracking and the bolt hole areas and the blades tend to fall apart. You know? <laughs> yeah. Asked my opinion, and my opinion was I probably would not do that. Did they do I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing to do with it. I know. Hey, I drilled these holes. What do you think? I think that's cool. I'd put a clock right in the middle of it and hang it in your living room and you'll be fine. All right, blade tips. All right, these are the blade tips. Uh, while I'm talking about this, does anybody know why the blade tips are painted this bright color? Well, you'd like to think that, wouldn't you? But here's the fact. You ever heard, heard the old saying about Henry Ford? You can have one of my... One of my Fords in any color you want, as long as it's what color were the Model T's, Model A's, black. That's right. That was a, that was a famous saying. Uh, you can have any color you want, as long as it's black. And why why was it that the original Fords were only offered in black? It was what? I think he's on it. Faster drying? Yeah. It was faster drying than all the other stuff. So it took a long time to dry. So black was the fastest drying one. So in the same way, he didn't talk about it, but black, um, on the opposite spectrum, black does not have the same cohesion as other colors. So now we paint propellers black because in the face, the backside that the pilot sees, is actually painted a flat black. And that's really important because you can get something called flicker vertigo. And, uh, and that's when, when light is flashing against it, it, can, it flickers and you can actually get a vertigo from that. But anyway, so blades are painted black because of this flicker vertigo. But the problem with the black is it doesn't have the same cohesion or a, a really good uh, cohesion. So it doesn't stick to the metal or the wood as was the problem. But they found, so what would happen is you would paint the aircraft blade and start it up in the centrifugal force, the paint would literally start sliding off the end. And what you would have to do is you would have to cut the paint right off here and then you'd find a spot over here that was actually missing paint because it had slid off. And so you'd have to constantly paint near the hub and cut off the extra paint that had slid down near the blade tip until somebody figured out that colors, bright colors like white, red, orange, yellow, had a much higher coefficient. And so by painting the tip, this uh, color that had uh, more higher cohesion, the paint would no longer slide off the end. So you didn't have to continue to paint the hub area. So that is why the tips are painted the bright color. What? So then why is it like one big box of white and then like a stripe? I, I really hadn't gone that far with my lie to figure that out. Because, because most everything I just said was just crap. <laughs> okay, so the things that were true. One, the Ford thing was true. Number two, the flicker vertigo was true. Uh, but the paint sliding off the end is not true at all. It's good <laughs> story. Yeah, blade tips are painted that way for safety so you can see them. <laughs> well, you would think that. I know. You'd think that. <laughs> Surprise. You'd be surprised. Okay. Where do you get extra? No, I'm not going to say that. Joke. <laughs> Maybe a break. All right. So uh, tips are painted a color so that for for safety. Uh, flicker vertigo is a real thing, and I actually had found out about flicker vertigo because a pilot uh, I was maintaining his his crop duster, and he ran through a barbed wire fence. And I didn't ask if he was flying at the time or not, but it scratched up his blade horribly bad, and he got flicker vertigo from it. And he called me up and said, hey, on your way home from work, can you stop by, bring a can of flat black paint and some, some files, and uh, I need you to file out a few minor dings in my propeller. And, and, uh, and, and, and huh? Were they actually minor? They were not minor, even a little <laughs> bit. It was really bad. <laughs> so, all right, uh, blade tips, we have the leading edge. The leading edge is the part that is the, the more round part that's going to go in the air. So if we for, to go in the air, uh, that is going to rotate forward. So this particular blade propeller would be spinning this way. So the leading edge is up here, leading edge is down here. The trailing edge is uh, much sharper. So it looks like a wing.
Uh, back to the leaning edge, you will notice that on wood propellers that this section right here, if you can see it on your on the dying bulbs up there, uh, this is actually, and I'll, I'll talk about this later, but it's got a metal tipping, like brass or manel or something like that, and it's there for uh, rock chip damage. And actually, all of this green right here, uh, that's funny, all of this green, and what color is it? It's olive green. All of this olive green is a fabric, like you would cover an aircraft in. That's real. Now you guys aren't gonna trust anything I say. Oh, we'll get to that. It's uh, protection, holds it together, makes it stronger. Uh, we have the back of the blade. So the back of the blade is the part of the blades that we are actually looking at. So this right here is the back. So the back is the front. Well, we could say differently. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest way to remember that is the back is not the face. And what is the face? Whoops, I didn't want to do that at all. So thank you for doing that. All right, so the face is the part that faces the pilot. Or the part that the pilot faces. So if you can remember that, the face is the part that faces the pilot. Then what's the other part? Well, the other side is the back. I could tell you the back is the cambered side, but I think you would remember it oh, the other way. That doesn't work on a pusher problem, does it? Well, I was going to say, unless we're talking about a Skymaster or a pusher, only works for a tractor. Uh, let's see, face of the blade, we got that. Um, we have the blade cord. The blade cord. Um, let me see, blade cord and blade station. Well, I don't even have pictures of that, so we can move on to this. And if you were following along, then I would have put one nomenclature. And all the things we just talked about. And now I'm up to what? Uh, we'll redo this one. J. Face of blade. Face of blade part that faces the pilot. Sure. And Prince says, does this work with a pusher type prop? It sure does, because if you were flying a pusher type prop, means you have the engine in the back. And would it work? Yes, because you have to turn around and look like no, you have to get around and walk around <laughs> outside because it's completely backwards, so now it wouldn't. Uh, part that faces the pilot in a conventional tractor-style aircraft, and it is the flat side. Flat side. That's non-disputable. Uh, JK, we have the blade cord. What's the cord of a wing? Okay, same thing. It is the line. Between the leading edge to trailing edge. And L, blade station. The distance in inches from the center of the hub. Now this is gonna mess with some people. 
And I'll tell you why. If we go back to this. And I said this is a 70 inch prop. 70 inch prop. That means from here to here, it is how many inches? 70, 70 inches. But the blade station is measured from here. So from here, from here to here, how far is it? 35. That's 35 inches. All right. So remember that blade stations are going to then go one, two, three, four, five. So you can have two station ones. And where this is going to really matter, especially when you get into a test, and it'll say something, we'll be talking about the 70% station quite often. So if I want to know where the 70% station is, I figure this is 50 right about here, 60, 70 is somewhere in here. I'm just going to make that up, 70%. If I want to find the 70% station, so I multiply 70 times 0.7, I'm going to get the wrong answer. wrong answer. I have to use 35 inches. So 35 times 0.7, I'm not, what is that? Anybody knows offhand? Great, glad to see you're all there and paying attention. Four. Four? <laughs> what is it? 24.5, 24.5. Well, if he's right, and he probably is, then the 70% station of a 70-inch blade is 24.5 inches. It would not be this other one. What would that be? 7, 7, 49? That would be the 49-inch station. Well, that's fine because that would be somewhere over here. <laughs> All right, that wouldn't work. Everybody follow me on that? Anybody get lost? I don't know what he said, but I hope it doesn't matter. It's going to matter. Remember that sometimes you're going to talk about blade, um, the diameter, and sometimes we're talking about from the hub to the tip, which would be called Station. stations, or what is that in a circle terms? Radius. Radius. Very good. Okay. All right, so talk about theory. All right, so now we know, hopefully, uh, the names of things on a propeller. And so we can start talking about the propeller. We can talk about things like the face. You go, oh, I know what the face is. The face is the part that? The pilot. pilot. And I say, oh, the hub. And you're going to know the hub is center. the center. And what else we have? The leading edge. Is that the rounded part or the more sharp part? Rounded, okay, and that's the part that is going to go forward into the air. All right, so theory. Theory. Propeller is a rotating wing. And that's what Orville said. He said, well, how hard could it be? It's just a rotating wing, and we pretty much got that figured out. And then it was like, oh, man, wait a minute. It converts horsepower to thrust. Now, have you had a chance to look at a propeller? I know you have. If you either put one on the test stand or you have died while trying to install magnetos, you have had a chance to touch one and play with one and realize that they're shaped. The shape changes, right? All the ways you go down. And it does that for a reason. I want to explain that reason, which can be a little difficult sometimes, but I'll try to make it kind of easy. In order to do that, one thing we have to realize is the blade element theory. And the blade element theory says that, I should put this slide somewhere else. Blade element theory, we'll go from this one, from this one. Blade element theory is that the, the actual blade, and this is the, the profile of the blade as it goes. So you can look down here near the hub, and it's really fat, nothing personal. Uh, and 
as you move towards the tip, it starts getting thinner and thinner. And not only that, if we were to take a look at what's going on with, if I ran, or at least tried to, what am I running the line through? Okay. Is this drawing at least somewhat accurate? The cord line is different. It changes as we go. So not only do we have each section of blade being a completely different profile, but the angle of attack changes all the way through, which kind of seems crazy if you, if you think of it on the surface, because here, it's, if it's just a wing going around in a circle, the wing is traveling forward at the same speed as everything else, right? But remember that it's, it's going to be very different because as the propeller is spinning around, the tip is moving significantly faster than the hub. So the hub is moving pretty slow. The tip is going really fast. Right? So that's why we're going to be looking at how it changes. But anyway, the blade element theory says that um, each, each station is going to be completely different in order to make it efficient. So what can we say? Blade element theory, each, each section of blade is made up of small airfoils, kind of independent airfoils. Oops, each section of the blade is made up of small airfoils. Each one of these, these blade sections, each section, it can be any size. Any size, but for simplicity. Assume each section is like a one inch section. Now we can take it, if you were to slice it in one inch sections, you'd get sections that eh, they look pretty much the same. And let's hold it right there and take a break. <laughs>